So, this is a lesson. I've never done a teaching on this in the church, but I believe that this lesson will help some people. Though we desire through courtship for our relationship to go into marriage, there are cases and there are situations where a relationship does not work out. And today you're going to learn on how to identify that relationship and what to do with that relationship. Signs that you might need to break up. Number one, when a person does not share your faith, your values and your vision. Number two, when those in authority do not support your relationship. Number three, when you're trying to change that person. Number four, when you're being, you're being abused, controlled and manipulated in a relationship. Number five, there is no attraction. Number six, your gut says you're making a mistake. Number seven, a person is lying to you and is cheating on you. And number eight, you guys are always fighting. If you're dating or in courtship and these signs are present, especially more than one or two, no matter how difficult it is for you to listen to the next few minutes, you already know what you must do. And what I want to share with you is how to do it properly. Before you break up, know the difference between preferences and deal breakers. Now, every relationship will have preferences. Certain things that maybe you had an expectation. And someone said, the person that you're going to marry most likely will meet 80% of your expectations. And there's going to be 20 that they are not going to meet. Because sometimes our expectations are a little bit crazy. And so there are preferences that we would have and expectations that we will have and not all of them will be met. Even if you are in that stage right now where you feel like this person is exactly what I wanted, 100%, um, that's not true because nobody can be that uh, person. There's going to be always something that this person could change or do better. Even in the perfect relationship, 80% is really what you are looking for. And then 20% is what they're going to be missing. It's the reality of life. But the difference between deal breakers, things like abuse, things like a person is doing drugs, things like person is lying to you, things like nobody in your mentorship, parents or even friends support that relationship. Things like, you know, there's red flags, this person doesn't follow and does not have your convictions and does not have your vision. Things like you're always fighting. These are not preferences. These are deal breakers. So know the difference between these two. There's a funny story about uh, you know, when, when I met my wife, you know, at first it seemed like, man, she's a hundred percent. And, and she is, she's what I wanted, great blessing and beautiful and godly, graceful woman. But my wife had, um, did not have a straight teeth. Now I understand what I'm about to tell you, this is just my story, so take it with a grain of salt. And uh, when she would smile, you know, like her, her side teeth would kind of really, really stand out. And it kind of like, I don't know, just a little bit bothered me when I was dating. but. You know, I looked in the mirror and I looked at myself and how <laughs> not so handsome I was. So I was like, you know what? I think I can live with that. It's not a deal breaker for me. And uh, never once I mentioned that to her. Never once. In fact, when we were married, I never once brought it out. Once in a while I would notice it, but it wasn't a deal breaker for me. Until about a few months into our marriage, my wife noticed and mentioned that she's like, you know, I wanted to uh, straighten my teeth and, you know, take with uh, braces on but you know I never had the money and you know it's our young marriage we don't have the money right now and I was like well we can find money and I'm like very I used to be very stingy she's like really and I was like yeah for you anything it was like five thousand US dollars it's a lot of money and because you know it's something that bothered me a little bit I was willing to <laughs> to pay any price uh, for that and it made me very happy to know that you know it bothered her but that's a preference I could have lived with it with no problem whatsoever and never once bring it up because I was happy and I was satisfied 
preferences should not be deal breakers, but deal breakers should never be treated as preferences. So before you break up, know the difference between a preference and a deal breaker. Number two, talk to God. Pray about it. Before you go and ask other people what they think, ask God what He thinks about this. Number, uh, number three, have an honest conversation with the person you are courting or dating. Let's say that you have deal breakers. Have an honest conversation with them about this issue or that issue. Don't break up until you have a conversation. Talk with them. Bring it up. Maybe there's a misunderstanding. Maybe there's something about their past you don't know. Maybe there's something you're missing. And so having an honest conversation. A lot of people don't have honest conversations because they're expecting the other person to read their mind. The person you are in relationship with is not a mind reader and they're not a prophet. They're a person and you have to have an honest conversation with them. Next one. Get advice from mentors you trust. After having a conversation, you notice maybe things are not changing or maybe things are changing. Bring your mentors along. Let them speak some wisdom. Let them speak, you know, from their experience, things into your life that whether this is a deal breaker or not, whether you are overthinking, whether you're just being emotional, whether this is just a drama queen in you that is stirring that up. Maybe you're super hyper spiritual and pays attention to too many prophetic words and it messes you up and you're not thinking straight. So bring mentors in who can help you to think more clearly and see this from a more of a balanced view. And last one, if there was something that the person committed that you see that they need forgiveness for, forgive them. Now, if they cheated or they continuously lie or if they abuse drugs or this and that, you know, forgiving someone also does not mean that you trust them and it does not mean that you cover it under the carpet and go and get married just because they wept, cried, you felt sorry for them and because they promised they'll never do it again. Forgiveness and trust are not the same. Forgiveness does not mean restoration and reconciliation. Sometimes forgiveness leads to that. But there are cases and many of them where forgiveness is just forgiveness. You forgive that person, but it doesn't mean that you have a future with that person.